Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to take a look at how we go about enumerating Active Directory using PowerShell Empire. For this lab, I'll be using one install of VirtualBox with the latest version and the extension pack, one virtual install of Kali Linux, updated and upgraded, one virtual install of Windows Server 2012, 2016, or 2019, and for this demonstration, I will be using a Windows Server running as a domain controller running Server 2016. We need to ensure that all VirtualBox network adapters are set to NAT network. We need to ensure our IP4 settings for our Server 2016 domain controller are set for DHCP. And we also need to set the DNS address for manual and use the loopback address of 127.0.0.1 for its primary DNS server. Let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. This is my domain controller and what we're going to do now is I'm going to bring up my network adapters and we're going to take a look at configuring the right network adapter for DHCP. So in this case I have two network adapters that are configured up inside of VirtualBox. I'm using adapter 2 because it is configured for DHCP. Let's go to properties and if I go to the TCP IP version 4 protocol, you'll see that I have it configured to obtain an IP address automatically from the VirtualBox DHCP server. I also have the primary DNS server set with an address of 127.0.0.1, which means that I want the server to look locally for any DNS information that it needs. Let's go ahead and cancel this out. Let's go ahead and bring up my Kali machine. Now my Kali machine also has this network adapter set to NAT networking. So let's take a look at that. So I have one network adapter configured for my Kali machine and it too is configured for NAT network. If you need to know the IP address for your Kali machine, open up a terminal, type in ifconfig, hit enter. There is the IP address for my Kali machine. Yours will differ. And we're now ready to get into the configuration of our PowerShell Empire for the enumeration of our domain controller running on server 2016. So the first thing we have to do is get into the listeners module. Now to do this, I'm just going to type in listeners. And it says that no listeners are currently active. To activate a listener, I'm going to type in use listener. Space. Now I have to type in the type of listener I want to use. Now the most common listener for PowerShell Empire is the HTTP listener because it is so reliable. So I'm going to type in HTTP. I'll hit enter. Notice my prompt changes to let me know that I'm now inside of the listeners module and I can configure the listener for HTTP. And if I type in info, you can see all the different commands that I can assign to this listener. Now, Another thing that we see here is why this particular listener is so popular. It is because that we can create a PowerShell or Python reverse shell with it. And that's what we're hoping to do here. Now you'll notice that the configuration is very similar to that of Metasploit. For instance, I want to set the host IP or the listener IP for this machine. So I have to type in set space host. Now notice that host has a capital H. And yes, everything inside a PowerShell Empire is case sensitive. So if the command requires a capital letter, you got to make sure you apply it. Not all commands require a capital letter, but some do. So at the prompt, I've typed in set host with a capital H space HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of my host machine colon and the listening port that I want to use, which is 4444. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Comes back to the prompt, let me know that that command completed successfully. And it says my listener has successfully started. So now if I type in listeners and I hit enter, you'll see that I have one active listener. All right, let's bring back up our Windows Server. Now by default, Windows Defender is not going to allow you to execute anything that is harmful to this machine. That is the real-time monitoring that Windows Defender provides. 
So we have to defeat that. Now the only way we can defeat that is by turning it off. Now to do that, I'm going to use the PowerShell scripting engine. So down here, I'm going to type in at the search bar on my server, PowerShell. And I'm going to select the scripting engine right here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say run as administrator. So at my PowerShell prompt, I'm going to either type or paste in the following. Set dash MP preference space dash disable real time monitoring space dollar sign true. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it comes back to the prompt letting me know that that command completed successfully. All right, we got one more to punch in here. Again, I'm just going to copy and paste this into the prompt. Set dash MP preference space dash disable archive scanning space dollar sign true. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Comes back to the prompt letting me know that that command completed successfully. All right, leave your PowerShell window up and let's go back on over to Kali. So the next thing I have to do is create a launcher. And the launcher that I want to create is called PowerShell. So I've typed in launcher space PowerShell. And at the prompt, I'm just going to press enter. But before I do that, I have to get back into the listener. So I'm going to type in the following. Use listener HTTP, hit enter. Now I will type in launcher PowerShell. And now I'll hit enter. This script needs to be copied in its entirety and taken over and put into the PowerShell window on my server 2016 machine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this. Make sure you get everything. Get the whole thing, right click on it, and now you're going to copy it. Bring up your server 2016 machine. And at the prompt here, you're just going to right click and you're going to paste. It's all going to be one single line, one long single line. When you have everything pasted in correctly, just hit enter. Give it a second. And when you return back on over here to your Kali machine, you'll see that the PowerShell has launched a stager. An initial agent has been created between that server and this Kali machine. Now this is the agent we're working with right here. So pay attention to that and hit enter. You're back to the prompt. Now you can type in agents. You're now inside of the agents module. You'll notice that the agents name is right here. So go ahead and let's copy that. And at the agents prompt, we're just going to type in rename. Give it a space. Copy and paste the name of the agent as it is now. And now give your agent a new user friendly name. I'm going to call mine SRV2016, hit enter. Comes back letting me know if that command completed successfully. And so if I now type in agents one more time, you'll see that the name of my agent has changed to SRV2016. We're now ready to interact with our agent. So I'm going to type in interact SRV2016, hit enter. And I'm now inside of that agent. If you would like to see what's going on between your Kali machine and the server that the agent is connecting to, you can just type in info. Now what's important here that you have to pay attention to is the high integrity. That means that you have administrative access. Now from here on out, we're going to be enumerating Active Directory. And to do this, we're going to be using a module called Situational Awareness. It's kind of a long command, but I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it in here. And now would be the time to go ahead and zoom in so you can see exactly what's going on here. So at the prompt, we have use module space situational underscore awareness forward slash network forward slash power view forward slash get underscore user. And what this is going to do is pull up all the user accounts that are currently available in Active Directory on our domain controller running server 2016. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And we're now inside of that particular module. The next thing we have to do is type in execute and hit enter. Give it a second. It's going to have to run the job. 
and it starts the job and then it's going to bring us over all the information that we requested. So you can scroll on back up in here and you can see all the different user accounts and all the information you ever wanted to know about those particular user accounts. Their group membership, the last time they logged on, when the account expires, if it never expires, what is the name of the account, the SID for that account, there's all kinds of good information in here that you can enumerate using this particular module called situational awareness. Now to get back to the module prompt, you can just press enter. Now if you would like to go back one level, you can just type in back and you'll note that we are now back working with the agent itself. You can also type in interact space the name of the agent and that will also take you back to the agent prompt as well. This next module up inside of situational awareness is called get underscore computer and this is going to bring us all the information about the computers that are currently registered up inside of Active Directory on our server 2016 domain controller. So I'll type in execute, give it a second to build the job, job is built and in just a moment it's going to come back and it's going to give us the information that it found in Active Directory about all the devices that are currently up inside of Active Directory. So you can see what machines are actually part of this domain. You can get all the information you want to know about that particular machine except for the password. That's about the only thing you're not going to get. You can also find out where in Active Directory the machine is actually located. So there's a lot of good information that you can enumerate from this particular module as well. So let's go ahead and hit enter, come back over to the prompt. And again, we're going to type in back. And this module here is going to give us the logon information. And so to enumerate users on the local or remote machine, the attacker can take advantage of the get logon module. It should be noted that administrative rights are required to use this particular module. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And that module is now loaded and I'll type in execute and hit enter. The job is going to build. Currently there's only one user that is logged on to that domain controller and that is the administrator. If there were others it logged on I would be able to see it. Let's go ahead and hit enter. We're back to the prompt. Type in back and let's go ahead and take a look at the processes that are currently running on that domain controller. So again at the prompt I'm going to use that situational awareness module and this time we're going to take a look at processes. We'll go ahead and hit enter and I'll type in execute. Hit enter. The job builds and in just a moment we'll have a look at all the processes that are currently running on that remote machine. And here you get a list of all the processes that are currently running on the domain controller. And of course this is important because you're looking for a service that could be vulnerable to an exploit. And that's why this would be a good module to take a look at. Let's go ahead and hit enter. Come back to the prompt. Let's type in back. And this time we're going to take a look at the organizational units that are currently available on the domain controller. And these are also known as what? Containers, right? So let's go ahead and type in execute. Hit enter. Give it a second to build the job. And it comes back with a list of all the organizational units that are currently present on the domain controller. So now let's take a look at the domain controller itself. So I'm going to type in back. At the prompt, I'm going to use the following module. And that's called get underscore domain underscore controller. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. I'll type in execute. Hit enter. The job builds. Let's give it a moment. We'll come back with all the information we need to be able to exploit the domain controller. So we get some information about the forest that the domain controller is running in. We get some information about the OS version. We got the roles. We got the domain itself, the IP address, which is given to us in hexadecimal. We also have the site name. We also get a lot of other information in here that we can use to help us exploit the domain controller. So regardless if you're a blue team, red team, or a purple team, or whatever color your team is, 
and you need to find out the information that a hacker is going to see if they get access to your domain then you can use PowerShell Empire to enumerate all that information using the situational awareness module up inside of PowerShell Empire. And so that's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about enumerating Active Directory on our Windows Server 2016. You got questions? You got concerns? Please don't hesitate to reach out, contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.